I'm excited for our next guest. He made the switch from console pleb to PC Master Race a long time ago and never looked back. At the age of 22 years old, he is thought of by many to be the to- a top NA talent in CSGO, former member of Renegades, and now a key cog of Team Envy's comeback into the scene. Welcome to the center ring, Noah Nifty Francis. Thank you very much. Super happy to be here. What is up, I man? We're, we're excited to have you. And I love podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I love them all. No, we're excited to have you on. Obviously, you know, you being in our backyard, we met the other week at the uh, the homestand for the Dallas Fuel. So we wanted you on for a long time. And now with... Dallas Fuel homestand, baby. We'll talk about <laughs> that because that was pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, now with new roster for NVCS Go and kind of a new year, figured it would be a good time to have you on to, to talk about that. Let's jump right into that that fuel homestand where we met last week. I mean, that was that was pretty nuts. I don't know. Have you ever seen anything like that specifically for an esport? <clears throat> so I, I've yeah, I've yes, I've seen bigger obviously as an esport. Um, just because Counter Strike events can go to fifteen to twenty thousand people yeah, with majors watching, and everything. But I guess more I mean, as like it's, a home. It's game. beautiful. Yes, a home game. I was at the very first one. Uh, that they hosted last year in I want to say the April or Center. May, yeah, uh, and that was that was awesome. You know, that's really where I got to experience the first time, you know, what kind of a fan base the Dallas Fuel actually has. So, um, I was thoroughly impressed last year, and this year I knew we were using a different location, but what excited me the most was the fact that they brought myself and Jane Wizrobe and Taimu in to do the Burleson High School event. Yeah. Um, which was incredible. I mean, I didn't, I didn't expect to get a lot of people coming up and asking me questions or like, Hey, you know, like, Oh, that's nifty. Just because I, I understand where I'm at, you know, like I understand the environment. This is an overwatch event. Uh, I'm probably not going to have too many people come up and that's okay with me. So I made valuable time with the people that did. So I thank them of course. Um, but it turns out the person that I actually spoke to the most was the, uh, staff, uh, person that they hire, you know, to kind of stand next to the booth. Right. Um, we spoke the most, and he was actually super cool. Hopefully, I I gave him some advice or taught him something that could help him bring his his stuff to the next level. So, um, but yeah, dude, homestand was sick. Any part of you that wishes that, I, obviously, CS is a bigger esport, and we all know that, right? But any part of you that wishes there was this home in a way type rivalry within CS. Um, if there was, there'd probably be a lot more traveling, uh, and traveling in Counter-Strike is pretty crazy already. Um, so maybe, maybe not, honestly, um, I'm still not sure what the best system for Counter-Strike actually would be. Um, but we're working on that right now. Uh, as you can see with like the three different leagues that are going on, all this crazy stuff. So. You kind of good because I actually want to ask about that. Or, you know, <laughs> I don't know how much we're allowed to go into it. Obviously, the decision hasn't been made publicly for NV yet. But we, we've seen all the, the chatter go back and forth. Obviously, Thorin kind of being the spokesperson for, for B-Side. He's been pretty vocal out there. And, and ESL is having to respond to a lot of negative criticism that it's at least we've seen publicly. Who knows what the deals are really you know, behind closed doors and how all that's going. But any any thoughts on your end of... of you know, is this good for the Counter Strike ecosystem the way this is all happening publicly? I don't know if it's good, but I know that it's necessary. Um, only because teams, organization, it doesn't matter if you're team liquid, you know, and you can have the best team in every game and all these like great sponsors and sources of them actually making profit and income, right, as, a, as an org, but. It's just not profitable ha- to have a Counter Strike team right now. It's just not, uh, unless you're like the very, very best team. Um, so you know, this is a collaboration from many teams trying to make it uh, actually profitable, right? To, to try to actually keep the space going, Counter Strike going as a whole. Um, just because the 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 kind of layout that we've had over the past couple of years, uh, it's just too erratic, too crazy. You know, I mean, there's a lot of competition and there still is a lot of competition. Uh, one thing that I despise about it is just overlapping events um, or, or lo- overlapping an event with a qualifier for a bi- another big event. Like, yeah. that's the worst thing ever. The worst thing ever, 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 ever. You should never have to choose. Um, so, 
yeah, I, I mean, I, it's really tough to say how it's going to turn out, but I am nonetheless excited. Do you think the players under like are on board also in terms of the change that's going to be needed on their end also, right? Because this is the, the salaries have skyrocketed through CS, right? And and that's been a big part of the issue is the transfer fees and all that the, you see associated with some of these contracts. So obviously there's going to be a change that not only comes to the tournament organizers, but the players as well. And do you feel like the consensus across the board is that the players are also okay with this change? Um, There may be a few that, that truly are okay with it, but most players that say they're okay with it, they're full of shit. I mean, <laughs> that's just the way it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously everyone, I, here's what I believe, right? When you're a professional, anything really, but like, especially as an athlete or esport player, you put, like your whole life is this, you know, your whole life is this. And you really don't know when your game or maybe just, you depending on what kind of competitor you are how hard do you work will just be eradicated and so i i think it is important for people for players to earn as much as they possibly can right without inflating the the market like crazy and you know all this kind of crazy shit um but i do think that that players doesn't doesn't even matter it has nothing to do with skill level or or results or nothing i just think that based on what they are putting in for their teams themselves, like they just, they deserve to be paid well. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not really sure what it's going to look like for players down the line here soon. Um, but even if, if it's more balanced, that's okay too. Now, are you part of the CSPPA yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm part of the group, but like, honestly, the only ones that have power in the CSPPA are, are the board members, um, which are like, I think there's like roughly seven to nine board members yeah. and then there's a couple administrators i know scoots is kind of like an advisor um but really those are the guys that will make the final decisions on everything um i mean we get to throw in like our thoughts and, and ideas and stuff but it's really tough to to know exactly what's going on um how often do they reach <laughs> when things out are going on for like second opinions because from an outsider's view every time we see like these leagues pop up and then all of a sudden someone's bitching about something, whether it be the players or people in the scene are bitching that the players are getting shafted in it. And then it's always the question of, well, what happened to the players association? Do they not have any power? Like, do they, do they reach out? Is there any, the players association has, it has power. Uh, it doesn't have unlimited power. Um, it's really kind of just like, Sometimes I think the players' association goes against itself uh, for and for what it's meant to do. Um, if I was a board member, I would clearly change these things, but I'm not, so it's okay. So right now I can kind of just like spectate and see what happens, and basically learn from other people's mistakes, um, which is what I like doing anyway. <laughs> so um, because I know that when I am when I am in those positions to to do something, I'll I'll always make sure that I do the right thing. So um, yeah, I mean they can they can make decisions and help make decisions but at the end of the day it's 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 all about coming to a middle ground right now when it comes to anything to do with the leagues or anything like that and it's it's tough to find sometimes because honestly the players are very 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 demanding um however i can understand why we are because there's a, it consistently happens the same things happen at events um or when new leagues get brought up or new discussions the same things reoccur and uh, they're the same issues that we've talked about before, so eventually people just get irritated, and it, it gets all out of whack. So so you brought yeah. up, and, and it's a very good point, like football players never have to worry about a new football. Like and the NFL players never have to worry about a new NFL coming out and then just wiping out their careers overnight. Whereas you as a professional gamer, Project A is right around the corner, and every, you know the hype train is all aboard for that, and people are saying it's going to be the Counter-Strike killer. Do, do you always nah, have bro. that thought it, in the back of your head? Nothing's going to be the Counter-Strike killer. Nothing will. Nothing, nothing will be the Counter-Strike Counter killer, bro. This, this, this game is here to stay. It's going to be the ancient dinosaur bones in the ground when it does die. So, now, this could be a Counter-Strike competitor. No, I do feel yes. like it has so to be. So that's exactly what that. it's going to be. It's going to be a competitor. And what I hope 
because we haven't had any competitors, you know, yet Valve has still done such a great job in the past couple of years updating our game and trying to come as close as possible to perfecting it mechanically, right, and all the other kind of like itsy bitsy shit, right, that needs to be fixed in Counter-Strike. And they've done great at that. But what they haven't had to introduce something like how Dota has like the international or, you know, some sort of maybe even like Valve League or something. Uh, what they haven't done is had a competitor. And I think Project A will be that for us. Um, it will ultimately help Counter-Strike grow. And people who are chasing after something that they don't even believe in in Counter-Strike will now have something new that they can go after that's similar to Counter-Strike, but it's a brand new, brand new field. So it's open season for anyone. Um, so I think it'll introduce a, many more opportunities for players, uh, managers, coaches, teams, the games themselves, right? Like it's it's going to be great for everything. So you know, you you made the switch from Call of Duty. What you must have been around like sixteen, seventeen years old. I'm guessing around there, um, going over to Counter Strike. And so when you you did that, you know, maybe it was it was a move. I've heard some of your other previous interviews that you you kind of I don't want to say lost the passion, but Counter Strike piqued your interest enough for you to make that move. And obviously, it's grown to become a, a massive part of your life. How in love with this game are you still? Still? Yeah, to this uh, day. I, I love this game when there are a particular set of people around me with same goals, same intentions, and we get along. That's when I love this game. Because as a professional Counter-Strike player, 98% of the time... It's very easy for the majority of professionals or amateurs in attempt to becoming professionals can honestly hate their time playing this game. It's it's very easy to do that. It takes mental toughness. It takes insane amount of skill to, to be able to keep yourself level-headed, interested in the game, loving the game, right, so that you're not wasting your time, right? Um but yeah, like you said, like it was, it was definitely just another game piqued my interest when I started playing CS back in the day. Um, you know, like I, I still enjoyed playing COD, but once I started playing Counter Strike casually with my friends, I was like, dude, it's on. This game is sick, and I am talented. You know, so I don't know. I think, I think this is the way to go because at that same time, that was when the Fnatic era was booming, and like it was just around the corner, 2015, right? So majors were just getting going, and the hype was coming on. And it, it was just it was just perfect timing. But at the same time, I had been playing COD since I was like, I don't know, man, 10, 10 or something. And I was just, I, I saw the direction that it was going in. And I was just, I just kind of decided, like, I, I don't think I want to be part of this. Out of curiosity, so. was, was CS your first FPS on PC? First and only. Wow. So that's, that, that is interesting because we've talked about on the podcast before where for a new FPS player, CS can be so daunting. Like the like we have a buddy who uh I'm not going to lie to you Nifty is terrible. And he just doesn't understand the recoil control. He's trying to jump and shoot and climb ladders and shoot. And like for a fresh FPS player, they just don't understand like hey, the crosshairs on his head and I'm shooting. What's going on? Like how did you I mean, was it just that competitive mentality then that kind of persevered through? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really was, I, I kind of just picked up the game like pretty quickly. Um, I, I kind of understood a little bit of what it took to, to climb a ladder, you know? So I, I'd say I had like a, a minimal competitive edge <laughs> over some of the other competition trying to climb that ladder. Um, I mean, it did, it, like I've, I've said in many other interviews, like it really did take me a little while to get used to the mouse and keyboard. Like I would wake up every single day and my first time on the PC that day playing Counter Strike was dreadful, dude. I mean, it felt like I hadn't ever, I hadn't ever even played the game before, you know. And I was just like, why does this keep happening, you know? And I, and then I, I I just had to keep reassuring myself, really, just like, okay, you know, I'll I'll get it eventually, you know. One day I will touch my mouse and it won't feel like this foreign object <laughs> that I've never picked up before, you know. Uh, but building that, uh, building that consistency was was key. So I wanted. So you, oh, go ahead, Anuj. Like, so you you know you talk about mentioning the players around you is what gives you that passion to play, and I kind of want to transition into the lineup, right? This is like, um, obviously a, a big change for the team. 
uh, this is now an international roster. And just want to get your take on like how did this lineup come together? Um, what are you excited about? And and do you you know now feel that passion playing with these guys? This I'm honestly so happy to return to like this like semi international roster. I mean, we have a Canadian, so we can we can't we have to call it like a North American roster still, but he it's still different like even when you're a canadian i don't know what it is man it's just well, fun Canadians it's just fun different. it's just fun when you have all these different like personalities and people that have grown up in different parts of the world where they're raised differently the way that they think is different their perspective on counter strike is different right their thoughts and ideas they might they may match yours sometimes but it's just a different way of thinking and it's interesting man because you can just learn so much from it so much faster than you can with a group of five or six Americans, in my opinion. I don't know. This is just from me from experience. But uh, I love it because the guys that we picked up, insane passion for this game. Insane. Like, especially, like, Legia already. I mean, this guy, this guy has already, I've spoken with him about things, and we talk about Counter-Strike. That's it. That's all we talk about is Counter-Strike. Um, and the things we talk about are just incredible bro just absolutely mind-blowing like i've been i've been wanting to have somebody that i can bounce with back and forth off of like ideas about like the game and how a team how a team can be ran right like the actual ceiling that a team can actually operate at because i feel like astralis has been the best at getting close to that but i feel like you can go way higher like you can go way higher in the way that like your players live live their lives and just the way that they act, you know, the food that they consume, when they consume it, how much they consume it, right? Working out, spending time together and just meditation, right? Thinking about thinking about things like all these different things, the heights that you can reach are unbelievable, man. And that is my goal with this team so is, with, is, to, is to reach a height that hasn't been. So with Envy's new headquarters, you're obviously next door to the fuel to uh empire now you got your guys is there other envy people are over there i know mike's hired you guys like a personal trainer on that note then about taking your team and busting through that glass ceiling do all those little factors go a long way when it comes to like the org actually caring yes so all those things are resources those are things that we need to use it is it is up to us and when you're when you're a part of this team and this is just how it needs to be around Envy. It doesn't matter if you're the most talented, skilled individual in the world. If you're not doing these things that are required of you and or that, that is scientifically proven will make you a better player, better athlete, better person. You'll feel better. You'll be more confident, right? You'll be able to focus more. That's the, that's the key thing, focus. Nobody knows how to focus and especially focus for an extended period of time. So... All of those things are resources, and it is up to each and every single player to go and seek out those resources themselves, right? Because they, they are right here in the building. You can schedule workouts with with uh, Miniker, who is our personal trainer, and you can schedule sessions with Mike, who is our mental trainer, um, and, and they are there all the time to speak to you, right? Provide this outside perspective, any ideas that, that you can't think of yourself or you're not getting from your team, you know, they, they're, they're there to provide you with those things. Um, and those things themselves are coming along as well, because we have four teams in this building. And, you know, so we're looking at roughly with like all the, the crazy roster that like Dallas field and overwatch teams have to have, where you have like 12 players or something, right. you know, we're looking at like 40 people, 40 players plus coaches, you know the whole coaching staff so you know these are all people that need to be involved in this in this movement and what we're doing here if you're not then you're doing it wrong so you talked about resources that you have internally who as an in-game leader do you look either try to pattern your game after or or take a lot of you know in the sense watch a lot of their footage to see how they do it who on the outside has been a big resource to you in terms of watching watching gameplay strategically Gubby. Uh, as far as different forms of being able to lead your team, I, I actually consider myself almost similar to like Golden. I, honestly, Golden and, and, and me, like we have similar styles of how we like to call and lead our teams. Um, you know, I mean, obviously many people would say Glaive, right? There are, there are tons of things that you can learn from Glaive. Glaive does yeah. great things, great, great things. Um, but for me, like big, 
<clears throat> when it comes to strategy. Um, just, you know, it's funny because back in the day, early Renegades, uh, I watched a lot of Space Soldiers because we we actually ended up playing them a bunch of times. And now I'm playing with one of their players, which is sick. Um, but yeah, Space Soldiers Major was a very interesting leader the way that he handled his his squad and it was like it was like like turkish power or something <laughs> just like the way that he called he was just like all right rush this over and over and over again throw a little fake rush it again like it's just it's just cool man like he knew how to use his players um but and and, and i honestly i hope that more in-game leaders develop like over time and, and they start more of them just start developing coming out because there are just not enough, especially in NA. You know, there there are a few that have like tried to be in game leaders on and off, and and I even switched off for a moment because I wanted to give, I wanted to learn other roles in depth. You know, and as an in game leader, you don't always get the time to do that. So, do you um, think uh, the excuse of being an in game leader is is dead? Because that used to be like, oh well, he's bottom fragging, but he's he's an IGL, so it's okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that that I would say that excuse, yes, definitely is dead. I mean, there's really no excuses for anyone in the team. You know, I mean, it, but the whole like bottom fragging and and, and it, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand it. I understand it as a spectator. Like you, you have to go off of like stats, uh, you know, uh, analysis uh, or analysts have to look at stats as well. And they really do mean something, especially when you look at the best players in the world, right? Like, obviously, they're consistently in the green. Plus 20, plus 20 this event, plus 60 this event, whatever, right? And and yes, the best players will consistently do that. But when you operate inside of a team, everyone has jobs. There are certain kills that players are designated to get, right? Like, yeah. so there are other players in the team that are meant to be doing nothing <laughs> yeah. when, when this is happening. So it's not like we're five people running around chasing kills no dude this is most rounds are calculated the only things the only part of rounds in counter-strike that are not calculated are mid rounds because you don't know exactly what's going to happen you don't always know how the other team's going to react and you also don't know how your team's going to react sometimes you you can have you can have protocol and the situation still may even call for somebody making some sort of out of the box play you know or or out of protocol play you know it's very possible the millions trillions of of Mid rounds and potential situations, millions of trillions. Um, so no, I, I never understood that. I mean, obviously everyone has to hold themselves accountable for getting kills that you need to get. It's the easy kills, the kills that you should get, especially when you win via positioning, right? And and teamwork and communication. Those are the kills you need to get. No one expects you to win a one v three though. You know, it's it was learning how to call mid round probably the toughest part about being an in game leader. Uh, learning how to call in mid round really it's it, it's actually really easy to call mid round um, if you have proper pieces in your team providing you with the right information because it's not like the IGL sees all hears all knows all right you need to hear a lot from your teammates because you're putting them into positions right that will provide them with information that they have to then have the skill to be able to relay to you in the shortest amount of time possible so that you can then make the decision of what you need to do next and how how to articulate yourself to tell your team to do exactly that. That's the tough part. It's the, it's the transitioning from player to player and how good your communication is, and then I have to be able to decide. Has communication been a barrier so far for you guys, or how has the communication been just because of all the different nationalities that you have? Um, has that been an issue at all? Sometimes it's mostly funny though. Yeah, <laughs> I have a good time with it, really. Um, <clears throat> it's it's funny because we have so Kalex, his name is Buddha, and sometimes like I'll just make a call, or well, even even anyone, right? If anyone makes a call, like yo, okay, let's be split now, you know, he'll just be like, what? <laughs> and it's like because he's got this very that harsh he replaces the double yeah, this very harsh like <laughs> turkish accent and we just yeah. we, we have a great time with it especially when we go back and like we kind of like watch some of our games or listen to ourselves um you know just because we need to we need to be able to review ourselves and improve um and we talk about these <laughs> with these moments and it's just it's hilarious because he's just standing somewhere waiting for something to happen he's like what did you say <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's great but um 
yeah, no, we we honestly haven't had too much. Uh, I think I think luckily for Leggy actually has great English. He's been in the states before, um, but he's also older. He has great English for Mishu and Kalix. Uh, Mishu I think takes English lessons already and or already has. Uh, Kalix wants to start, but um, both of them are pretty decent. Um, I think I think both of them are kind of lucky that I can articulate myself and almost put my myself in the position of like a European and I can talk to them as if I'm like a European player. Give a little bit of the accent or tone or, you know, I always, always, yeah. I'm, I'm throwing accents out mid game. <laughs> I'm throwing all kinds of shortened English language and all this kind of stuff, man. And, and I know that like Moose and Ryan, like they're going to understand what I'm saying, yeah, you know, yeah. so I need to make it applicable for the other two as well. Just uh, next time Michu screws up, just say Matka Buska. <laughs> <I'll understand it. laughs> you know who on this team uh out of out of the new additions here um who has really surprised you the most or what has something you know one characteristic or in-game characteristic of them that has really taken you by surprise you didn't know they had that ability or they were that good at that you know that particular role okay great question um so moose I wasn't really sure what to think of him as a player before he was on my team or before we seeked him out. <clears throat> um, I just knew that he played for United. But I've played against him a bunch of times. I knew he was like, okay, this kind of player. But you really never understand how a player actually like works, how their mind works, and how they operate until you're on a team with them. You know, And you actually get to pick their brain and listen to them speak and ask them why. And then they tell you why, right? So... Um, one thing that he does really, really great um, is there are not, it's honestly undervalued, there are not a lot of players, um, professional players inside of North America that keep their eye very, very closely on the kill feed. And it doesn't matter which part of the map they're on. If a, a fight goes down and we kill somebody from the other team, he instantly says like, okay, that's A player, that's Cat player, that's B player, right? So now that makes all of us aware like, okay, what the fuck? If we just killed the A player in B, something weird's going on. You know what I mean? Like we, yeah. we're, we're need yeah. to think a little bit extra about this, right? Or it might have, give him information as a lurker to make a play. Um, and not many players do that. And it's honestly a very valuable skill because uh, I remember on Renegades, Ozer would do this. And you need at least one person on your team that's going to shout that out all the time. That's yeah. the A player. That's the B player. That's You know what I mean? Um, so... It's very it's very vital for success, especially for me. Like that's very important for me when it comes to like mid rounding and stuff because that's great information and invaluable. Uh so we won't take up too much of your time, but I got just a couple more questions. When you were on Renegades, have you ever done a shoey? <laughs> no, never done a shoey. Have you ever seen someone do a shoey? Like is that an actual yeah, of course. Like, yeah, I mean yeah, people get hyped and do it. That's a real yeah, thing. One thousand percent. I never did because it's gross. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of gross and that, it's just not something that like I would do. Like if you knew me as a person, I just probably would never do that. Even if I was like drunk or something. Um, but I'd never do it. And the other reason is I swear this is not a flex at all. I just would always have some very valuable shoes on and <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't I, like, yo, no, I'm not going to do a shoey. Uh, <laughs> you know, a Yeezy a probably isn't a, the, the greatest idea. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not going to do What's it. What's been so. your uh, favorite part about being in Dallas so far? Oh man. Uh, Dude, just just the just the like infrastructure, I think. Like I I've always thought like before I actually lived in Dallas, um I lived well I'm I'm from upstate New York, kind of like in the country. And then I lived in a suburb of Atlanta for selfless for maybe 3 months, which was nice, but it wasn't in the city. And then I lived an hour north of Detroit in a suburb with Renegades, <clears throat> not in the city, but also nice. And I always knew from the time when I was a young kid, like, I'll probably live in a big city one day, and it'll be fucking sick. And I get here, and it's exactly what I thought it would be. It's exactly, it's so many things to do, so many people to meet, right? You can, you can make friends and have friends and do things anywhere, anytime, all the time. 
Um, you know, and if you want to function in a big city, you got to take care of yourself too, because <laughs> people are going to notice. So, um, you know, that's, that's another good reason to just have like personal yeah. upkeep, you know? Um, but yeah, tons of, tons of nightlife options, restaurants everywhere, you know, yeah. and <clears throat> just everything, man. I don't know. It's just so much fun. Do you it's stay fun. around the victory park or uptown area? Is yeah, so I don't have a car because uh, I I don't really like need to go anywhere. I, yeah. I, honestly, like everything we have is like right here in this like probably like two mile radius at most. Um, and if we want to go any farther, we just like take an Uber. But yeah, like this this area is beautiful. Yeah, but I've don't... been all around Dallas. I know it. So. Don't move to the burbs. You move to the burbs, you look like this. I've <laughs> I've been out to the burbs of of Texas before. <laughs> There is no reason for you got a killer mustache, bro. What are you talking about? This is true. I do look pretty. (laughs) My mustache—it's the only thing I have going for me, really. It's—it's really the the on the short list. Um. (laughs) (laughs) So what's next for you guys? I know you guys are going. Is it Serbia? Is that what you guys are flying out to? Greg was telling me. It's like you're. Have you been (laughs) there before? (laughs) Um. Yeah. No. I, I love Serbia, man. Serbia is awesome, dude. There's just. There's it's great nightlife. Um, you know, there are there are honestly some beautiful people there and it's always a great time to go because um I'll I'll probably get to spend a minor amount of time with my ex coach Kasad. Um and I'll get to see like Nico and Yanko and you know, we'll probably like go out and have some fun one of these nights or something. Um but like obviously primarily why we are there is is to just focus and practice like we're getting in the trenches you know you go to the european boot camp you're in the trenches um you know as healthy as you possibly can maintain yourself you still want to be playing counter-strike between nine to 12 hours a day so we will we will uh we'll be there for almost two weeks um and as soon as we leave there we'll go straight to boston for packs um and then we'll do some like team uh promotion and stuff for like predator um, and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll come straight back here to Dallas, get about a, a week of practice, let the jet lag wear off, all that stuff, and then play the closed qualifier for the minor. Um, so that is our next goal is like make it to the minor. Two two best of threes. That's it. That's all it takes. It's nothing. Just baby steps. Baby <clears throat> steps. And now with the oh, yeah, one step at a time for sure. Look, you ever have trouble doing something in life? Bro, just one step at a time. Just break it down. Just break it down. I was I was talking to uh so I have two mental trainers just because I, I like as many perspectives as possible. You just got a lot going on. So, yeah. So I was talking to my other mental trainer today and even as like wise as he is and, and uh, you know, he's lived a lot of life. Like he was telling me like, yeah. And like, I just split from like this one department I work for. And um, you know, I've got like all this kind of crazy stuff. I'm working on my apartment right now, you know, like financial stuff and all that stuff. And I was just like, yo, <laughs> stop right there one step at a time <laughs> and he was like you're right dude you're right <laughs> one step at a time you know what i mean in-game so, leader inside and out hey man it, it, yeah it's like <laughs> even as an in-game leader when it comes to counter-strike i obviously like i have to think some steps ahead but i don't put too much thought into it i almost like just just like plant the seed plant the yeah. seed for the thought right so like if we're on round five and i i know i'm gonna have to make a big call in round eight i just plant the seed right i just tell myself that all right Round eight, or a couple of rounds from now, because I know we're gonna win these next two. They're probably double eco, right? I gotta make sure I make a, a proper call coming round eight, right? So, you know, I I just plant the seed, and then slowly as the rounds build, the thought evolves. Done. You know, sometimes you got to do that in Counter Strike, but when it comes to you have a lot of things going on in life, one at a time, step at a time. One at a time. Like it. Well, like dude, it. this has been uh, badass. Like I said, we've wanted you on the show for a while. We're obviously big fans of Envy and everything that they've going on. When they left CS, it was depressing. And then I don't want to take credit, uh, but they definitely asked us who they should pick up. And we definitely said you. And then like a month later. Shay can confirm this. This is actually this not, is... not to say that they chose you because we told them to. But they asked us as a friendly conversation, and we both uh, I love your career, man. We're we're big fans. Um, can, man, we wish you all the continued success. Hopefully, you guys have a a wonderful run. Get a chance to play in the major, whichever league you choose in. We look forward to seeing you all competing again. And so, um, wish you all the success inside and outside of CS. Yeah, I really appreciate all that stuff. Honestly, like to the heart, I appreciate all that stuff. That's funny that you told me that uh, about like Shay and stuff. <laughs> that's that's cool, but it's good by it's good by them, you know, doing some research, research, talking to people. You know, hey, what do you think about this guy, that guy, whatever? You know, 
whatever the case is. But we I'm happy to be up. here. I'm, I'm I'm glad that you guys are fans of Envy and and honestly to everyone else there that that listens to this, watches this. Um, you know, we appreciate all you guys. And I promise, as long as I'm part of this team, part of Envy, we're gonna be sick. Yeah, appreciate you joining us today, man. It's been a lot of fun. All right, yeah, I I feel like you guys are really serious about this. So you know, yeah. I wish you like all the success possible and you know if you ever need anything from me just let me know okay i'm here we'll wish you all the best dude awesome <laughs> take it easy okay right. safe all travels right, have a good time